cry when they die. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, are they okay? Oh no, you have to give yourself a punishment for, for not reading this book. No, I tried. If you don't know what the... Blah, 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 blah. Hello, hello, I'm Beth Joey and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, welcome, welcome. This is the channel where I paint my face, turn my camera on and talk about some books. So we're halfway through October, which means the first and second week of Spoopathon have just finished. And I would say I'm doing pretty, pretty well in that my score currently is more than what is required to get through the entirety of the board. You know what? I'm going to take that as a win. <laughs> if you aren't already aware, Spoopathon is a month-long readathon hosted throughout the month of October. It is hosted by Spoops over at Spoopy Hole. I will link her channel down below and the announcement video so you can go and check it out. But it's essentially a sort of zombie-themed readathon. I thought in this video I would just run you through what I've read so far in the first fortnight of Spoopathon and give you my thoughts on all the books. So I started this readathon with a reread, which was A Court of Wings and Ruin by Sarah J Maas. This is part of my big Sarah J Maas reread that I'm doing at the moment where I read everything that Sarah J Maas has written in publication order. So this is where I'm up to. So I think we're at like 2017 or something and I'm just about to pick up Tower of Dawn as well which is daunting because people don't like that book. Anyway, in terms of the points that I got for this book, I've got my little notepad here. I got 25 points for finishing the tile for uh, reading a book, 25 points for dark magic, 50 points for villainous, 25 points for reread, 25 points for LGBTQIA plus rep, and 25 points for cover being a team color. So as for what this book is about, if you don't know, you've probably been living under a rock because it is a very, very, very hyped up popular fantasy romance series centering around a character called Feyre. Feyre is a human, she is a huntress, and she has been just trying to get her family by by going out into the woods every day to provide for her family. Until one day she goes out into the woods and she hunts a wolf and she kills the wolf, but it is the wrong wolf because it so happens to be a friend or a soldier of Tamlin, who is the High Lord of the Spring Court residing over on the other side of the wall that separates the human and Fey realms. So in retribution for killing his friend, Tamlin decides that Feyre needs to come over to the other side of the wall and in a Beauty and the Beast style of events live with him uh, for the rest of her life. This throws Feyre into a world that she is just completely lost in and a war that she didn't even know was being raged over the wall and this book was so good. It was a reread so I knew it would be but I still loved every minute of it. Every single character in the Akatar series just holds a massive massive piece of my heart and this book was no different in the way they all grew and changed and the way they dealt with the trauma that they had experienced all throughout their lives and throughout the uh, series of books. I mean I don't often find myself so thrown in a book that I get emotional but I was on the verge of tears so often during the story especially in the battle scenes towards the end which was incredible to me because I usually find battle scenes so so, so boring but this one was written in such a way where I was like and what and that guy and then now he's dead and then that guy died too and what he was I kind of liked him I mean even characters that I didn't even love in this book I still rooted for them I think the world building and the magic and everything is so well explained in a very very uncomplicated way which makes the whole story really really easy to fall in love with and to get to grips with and to really, really experience in the way that I think you're supposed to. And I think rereading the story the second time, it made it even more enjoyable than the first because there were aspects of the story that I didn't quite understand, alliances in certain situations and things that I thought were betrayals but actually weren't, um, that were made clear the second time I read this book. So, loved this so, so much. It got five stars from me. And I moved on to If It Bleeds by Stephen King. I'm not going to spend a whole heap of time on this book because I DNF'd it. I really, really struggled with it. I didn't understand the point of the story. I didn't understand what it was trying to say. It's basically a story made up of five short stories, I think. And I didn't really understand the point that each short story was trying to convey. So I gave up after like halfway through the third one. As for what it's about, it predominantly follows one story, which is Holly Gibney's. She is in the Finders Keepers detective agency at her school and following a horrific experience explosion at the school, she becomes suspicious of the TV reporter who reports the case. Alongside this, we've got Mr. Harrigan's phone, where a young man named Craig introduces a curmudgeonly retired businessman to the wonders of the smartphone. The Life of Chuck, a three-act life story told in reverse order about a man whose face appears on a billboard and no one understands why. And Rat, which sees a struggling author head to a remote cabin in the woods of North Maine, where a deal-making rodent offers him a life-changing pact. So that's that. Not really my thing. I've read it because it was on my TBR for the month, but I'm probably going to be unhappy hauling this one so if you are interested come and get it. Then I decided to do a big sort of series read project starting with 
The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. And I did actually finish this one this time. I gave this four stars, I think it was. Yep, I just checked the rating. I gave it four stars. And as for the points that it gave me in Spoopathon week one, I got 25 points for finishing a tile, aka reading the book. I got 25 points for favorite trope, 25, 25 points for blood red, because obviously the cover is blood red. I got 25 points for haunting, 25 points for reread, 25 points for villainous, and 25 points for LGBTQIA plus rep, which means I ended week one and this book uh, with 375 points in total because those were the only two books that I read in the first week. As for what The Inheritance Games is about, it follows a girl by the name of Avery who has just trying to get by. She keeps her head down, she works hard until one day a guy shows up at her school and demands that she come with him because an eccentric billionaire has just died and she must be present for the will reading before anyone can find out what they've inher inherited. This leads Avery to finding out that this eccentric philanthropic billionaire has disinherited his entire family and bequeathed his entire estate basically to her with the condition that she has to live there for an entire year before she's able to get access to any of that money and she's not allowed to kick out any members of the family from the house unless like extenuating circumstances like they try to kill her or something. So naturally Avery is completely flawed by this and it's made even more complicated by the fact that one she is attracted to two of the brothers that she's just disinherited and two this eccentric old billionaire loved riddles which means the game is afoot as all of them try to find out how Avery comes into play and why she has been bequeathed this massive massive fortune. The Inheritance Games is another book with quite a big cast of characters quite similar to A Court of Wings of Ruin and it makes sense because this is quite a big family and you've got to meet every single one of them and understand the dynamic there but I think Jennifer Lynn Barnes was really masterful in that she really isolated right from the get-go who are the key characters that you really need to focus on and she developed them in such a way that you were able to really get to know them and feel for them as they'd go through everything in this story. I like the sort of exploration of trauma that happened in the story, especially through Grayson and Jameson, considering they'd gone through very similar traumas in their life, but then had experienced the effects of that very, very differently. And obviously Avery was an incredible character. I thought the way that she stuck to her morals and didn't spend any of that money, despite the fact that she was entitled to, because it was her money. And also this family was like trying to kill her like the entire time. She was 100% entitled to spending that money but she didn't and, and it really added to that ominous haunting presence in the book that none of this was really hers and she was an outsider. A mansion full of skeletons like the vibes in this were just incredible and I just thought on that mansion side of things it was really really fascinating how like disordered and disarrayed and unsettled and confused that you would feel throughout the entirety of this book because it's a labyrinth style mansion it's meant to make you feel like always like you're sort of lost. The pacing was slower at the beginning of the book, so if that's not your thing, then maybe don't pick up this one because it does need to spend a lot of time explaining the dynamics between Avery's family, the Hawthorne family, and how all these riddles came to be. But then once the riddles start about halfway through the book, it just kicks off into a pace like you would not believe. It moves so, so quickly. And I loved, loved reading this book. So that was the end of week one. Going into week two, I immediately picked up The Hawthorne Legacy by Jennifer Lynn Barnes, which is the second book in this trilogy. Obviously not gonna tell you what it's about because that would be massive, massive spoilers for the first one, but it follows directly on from the events of the first book, pretty much immediately picking up where they left off with an entirely new set of riddles and entirely new mystery for this group to solve. As for the points that I got for this one, I got 25 points for completing a tile or completing a book, 25 points for favorite genre, 25 points for first person narrative, and 25 points for criminal. So I got a total of 100 points for this book. And then as for my review, uh, the cast got even, even bigger in this one, but because so much time was spent developing those key characters in the first one, you didn't need to delve into those again in the second one. So we got to develop some of those characters that we met in the first book, but then didn't really get to grips with because the new mystery revolved around them this time. And so in this case, it was the sisters that they're the daughters of the billionaire and then obviously the mothers of the brothers. It also put a massive, massive question mark around some of the characters that we were definitely led to really, really love in the first book, particularly the lawyer, Alyssa. And I won't go into any more detail about why it put question marks around her but her motives are definitely questionable and then lastly with the like the love triangle I mean it just went to a completely different way that I ex expected after the end of the first book and I wasn't mad about it per se I definitely was expecting you know for one brother to sort of end up in in the romantic relationship but it ended up being the other one and I looking back on it now I'm glad it went that way but uh, it would have been so so angsty if it had have been the brother that I originally thought it would have been but I think this book was so so perfect in that it just kicked off with 
a, like a bang. Like it went immediately into reveals, immediately into those riddles, immediately into the action after a brief recap, obviously to summarize the things happened that happened in the previous book. But it was just like, bam, like straight on it with this story. And I really, really loved that. So really, really loved this story. I ended up giving it three and a half stars. No, sorry, that's wrong. I gave it four stars. I finished the Hawthorne Legacy and I jumped straight into the final Gambit, which is the third and final book in this trilogy. And I gave it four and a half stars really really liked it it was a massively massively enthralling read and completely completely different to the other two in that it wasn't multiple riddles that you would solve throughout the book it was one big riddle where you couldn't solve it until you had all the answers and that made the payoff at the end so much better as to the points that i got for this book it got 25 points for complete in a tile 25 points for favorite genre 25 points for first person narrative 25 points for criminal 25 points for gifted to you and that gave me a total of 125 points obviously not going to tell you what this one is about as well but obviously i've already said that it went down a completely different path in terms of the riddle whilst there weren't any sort of major characters introduced in this story it was definitely more fleshing out of the characters that we've already been interacting with and they just got so much more complex so much more complicated and then the there was an element of like really delving into ptsd and trauma and the effects of everything these characters had gone through in this book or in this series and that was really really delved into and i really really appreciated that because you know at the end of the day you have to come to terms with everything they've gone through and to just skip over that would have been a, a, a you know missed opportunity. This book definitely did read slower than the previous ones because of that big riddle and you didn't get the lots of little payoffs, you just got the one big payoff at the end. So in terms of reward at the end of the story, it definitely was better. But in terms of just making my way through the read, it just did take a little bit longer. But I think in terms of logic, it definitely improved in this story. Each character began to act in ways that would make sense in the situation that they were placed in. Four and a half stars and I'm so, so glad I finished this series i'm probably never going to read it again so it will probably be unhauled soon so hey if you're interested interested check out my vintage down below because it will probably be there i then decided to pick up i'm glad my mum died by jeanette mccurdy this is another book that's on my tbr for october and i knew going into this story that it would absolutely destroy me but i decided i had to pick it up anyway now if you know me at all you know that i am really really careful about memoirs especially when it comes to telling you what the book is about so i'm going to be reading you uh reading to you straight from the blurb like i always do and it says jeanette mccurdy was six years old when she had her first acting audition her mother's dream was for her only daughter to become a star and jeanette would do anything to make her mother happy so she went along with what mum called calorie restriction eating little and weighing herself five times a day. She endured extensive at-home makeovers while mum chided, your eyelashes are invisible, okay? You think Dakota Fanning doesn't tint hers? She was even showered by mum until age 16 and was also forced to share her diaries, email, and her entire income. In I'm Glad My Mum Died, Jeanette recounts all of this in unflinching detail, just as she chronicles what happens when the dream finally comes true. Cast in a new Nickelodeon series called iCarly, she is thrust into fame. Though mum is ecstatic, emailing fan club moderators and getting on a first name basis with the paparazzi, Jeanette is riddled with anxiety, shame, and self-loathing, which manifests into eating disorders, addiction, and a series of unhealthy relationships. These issues only get worse when, soon after taking the lead in the iCarly spin-off Sam and Cat, alongside Ariana Grande, her mother dies of cancer. Finally, after discovering therapy and quitting acting, Jeanette embarks on recovery and decides for the first time in her life what she really wants. Told with refreshing candor and dark humor, I'm Glad My Mum Died is an inspiring story of resilience, independence, and the joy of shampooing your own hair. This book felt like such an important read while I was reading it because it gave so much context to this show that I had grown up with my entire life. And it made me sort of rethink that, like, that experience of a child actor because it's something that you never really get an insight to and everybody shames them when they do try and like become something different and break out of that mold and I think this gave a really really interesting insight of like what that actually feels like from the person experiencing it. As for my review I'm just going to read you exactly what I wrote in my review because it feels really weird to read it and take it through core pile the same way I usually would and I just kind of wanted to bumble out my thoughts and and put it out there so what I said in my review was, it really feels weird to rate this book. Being a memoir, it was obviously based on individual experience and that was absolutely heartbreaking. I feel so conflicted after reading this story because I loved watching iCarly when I was growing up and I have such fond memories of it, but knowing everything that was going on behind the scenes completely reframes that experience. Everything Jeanette experienced growing up is unimaginable and it just puts everything into, into perspective. 
I really appreciate the straightforward way she told this story, no matter whether it made her look bad or her mom or any of her friends or family members. She didn't try to make any heroes in the story. The moments of levity were few and far between, but when she would lace in some sarcasm or dark humor, it made me simultaneously chuckle and so glad that she was able to make a joke. It would be so completely understandable if everything she had been through destroyed her sense of humor. Listening along to the audiobook made the experience even more intense because of the somewhat monotonous slash blasé way that she narrated her story. Maybe that's just her tone of speaking, I'm not sure, but it made the reading experience more intense because she was so matter of fact. It made it more shocking. But there was one moment where the emotion showed, when she choked up, and I was so shocked and surprised by it. But it was also so telling because it was a moment where she was reflecting on her 11 year old self knowing everything that she knows now. Like I said, it feels really weird to rate this book, so I'm not going to. I'm going to give it five stars because I think everyone should read it, which doesn't mean it's not deserving of five stars. It just means that I don't feel comfortable rating someone's life, but I don't want my lack of a rating to deter anyone from picking it up. So that's my thoughts on I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy. I'm so, so glad that I read this and it's going on my shelves, never to be forgotten about. Unfortunately, we did not finish the week on a positive note because I then decided to pick up After We Fell by Anna Todd, which was also on my TBR for the month and I DNF this because frankly, I just did not have the patience for this story at the moment. I had just read I'm Glad My Mom Died. I just did not have the patience for the story, for anything that goes on, for the toxic romance, for anything like that. I just wanted to read something Something with a bit more depth to it. This just wasn't it. This isn't what I wanted. So I DNF'd it. It doesn't mean I'm going to get rid of it. It just means I'm not going to be picking it up again anytime soon. So that was the last book I attempted to read. I don't know if I told you, but for the points that I gave, I'm glad my mom died. It got 25 points for first person narrative, 25 points for criminal and 25 points for read in a day. So overall, I'm currently sitting at 675 points for the first fortnight of Spoopathon. So I could probably finish here, but I'm going to keep going. I'm actually picking up uh, Velvet Was a Night by Sylvia Moreno Garcia next. So you will have to wait and see in either a week or two weeks time, depending on whether or not I get my shit together how that book is going, whether I'm enjoying it, all that sort of thing. But yeah, I'm just going to wrap up this video here. Let me know if you are participating in Spoopathon at the moment, if you are having fun, what you've been reading, how many points you're on, all that sort of thing. Come and chat to me in the comments down below. I love talking to you guys and I do my best to reply to every single comment. I really, really hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please do let me know by liking, subscribing and hitting that notification bell all down below. It is a super, super easy way to help my channel grow and I will see you lovely people in my next video. Bye!